Hi there Chevrolet owners. Today on your 2016 Silverado 2500, we'll be taking a look at and showing you how to install Super Springs Custom Suspension Stabilizer and Sway Control Kit for factory leaf springs. And this is what our Super Springs look like when they're installed. They will install above your factory leaf springs and they'll provide additional assistance for your leaf springs acting just as in another leaf spring plate. They perform similarly as an overload spring but they do offer support pretty much throughout the entire travel. If our vehicle's unloaded, they offer minimal support, so it feels very much like a factory ride height. But the more we load our vehicle down, the more this spring is going to work with our factory springs to provide us additional support, which will help keep our ride height from dipping as much under a heavy load. And it'll also offer increased sway control during evasive maneuvers and when going over uneven bumps. Our shackle attaches our new spring to the bottom side of our factory springs and we have a roller here down at the bottom that allows it to move as necessary as our spring flexes. This keeps it from binding up and also will allow it to provide varying support depending upon load. If we didn't have a roller here it could potentially bind up and we would have noise and wear but with this nice polyurethane bushing on it it keeps it nice and quiet. Both ends of your spring will have multiple holes in the shackle and these allow you to choose how much support you want your spring to add. The lowest hole is going to be the smallest amount of support and the highest hole is going to be the most amount of support. And you get both the front and back work together. So we've currently got ours kind of in a medium position where we've got the front in the lowest hole but we've got the rear in, a, in the middle hole and that will give us a little bit more than the minimum amount of support. Our spring is a steel construction with a black powder coat finish on it to help it look nice in your truck and also protect it against corrosion. Super Springs here is one of many different types of suspension enhancements we have available here at eTrailer.com. Some other options you have are airbags which provide a varying level of support. What's nice about airbags over these is that you can adjust the pressure in your airbags using just a hose. You just go in the back and air it up and you can adjust it for your specific load. With this particular setup, you pretty much have to choose which spot you want during the install and how much load you want. You can readjust it to another hole later, but nylon locking nuts aren't really designed to be reused again. So if you do that, then I would highly recommend replacing the nut so there's no chance of it coming back off. But what I do like about these over airbags is that there's really no maintenance. Once you've put it on here, you're done. Airbags have the potential to leak out. You have to constantly adjust it for the load that you have in the back. With these, they're kind of dynamic. Even though you can choose different settings for how much pressure you get, the more that we load these, the more support they're going to be adding. To give you an idea of how our Super Springs are going to perform, we're going to be hooking it up to our trailer and taking it out on our test course but we're gonna get some measurements of our ride height before we load anything up on it. So we're completely empty with just our fifth wheel in the back and we're measuring about 42 and a half inches here at the back. And up here in the front, we're measuring about 40 inches. So we're gonna go ahead and hook up now. We'll take our measurements again and then hit the test course. And then after we install the parts, we'll take the exact same measurements again and compare. We've now got our trailer hooked up and the full weight of it is on the back of our truck here. And we're at about 40 inches, so we've dropped down about two and a half inches. And up in the front here, we're at about 40 and a half inches, so we've raised up about a half an inch. We're now going to take it out on our test course and see how it performs. The suspension is pretty heavy duty on our truck here, but we definitely can feel a little bit. We're coming into the uneven bump section, so this is back and forth for sway. And I do expect quite a bit of improvements here. Ooh, it is quite bouncy especially side to side, but it does come back relatively quickly. So that does, does show that we got a pretty nice suspension on here to begin with. But I definitely expect it to help out with the twisting motion we were experiencing there just a minute ago. We're now in the even bump section. This is kind of like simulating going into parking lots that have speed bumps. And I do expect it to not quite bounce as much in the back there. We did have quite a bit of bounces with all that weight in the back. Lastly, we're going to take it over to our slalom where we're going to run tests like we are performing evasive maneuvers and we're going to see how that affects it. And I do expect these to stiffen up the back quite a bit 
So I do expect to see some improvement once we get them on there. And here we come into the slalom. And it is a little aggressive. It does like to throw us around. You can definitely feel the weight in the back there. But the truck overall handles it fairly decently. We've got our super springs installed now. Before we hook up to our fifth wheel, I just want to get a baseline of how our ride height is with it unloaded. And now we're sitting at just under 43 and a half inches. So we have lifted up the back of our truck by about an inch when it's unloaded with these installed. Now that's with our current setting. We did put a little bit extra load on the back of our leaf spring there so to make sure we had enough support for our fifth wheel here. And here in the front, we're a little over 40 and a quarter, so we've lifted it up here in the front by about a quarter inch. So again, we're not changing it too much, and it's nice that we are lifting both the front and the back, so that way we're not changing our geometry of our suspension and things. We're pretty close to everything being how it should be. But we've got that preload on there for when we put any weight in it. And we're now back out with our fifth wheel hooked up. We're going to recheck our ride height measurements, then we're going to hit our test course again. Here in the back, we're measuring just under 42 and a half inches, so we're pretty darn close to that factory ride height within about a quarter of an inch. And here in the front, we're back to 40 inches, so we're right back spot on to our factory ride height here in the front. So now that we've got our vehicle under load, but we're back at our factory ride height, we're going to restore all the lost handling and braking performance that we had before with the back of our vehicle sagged down. Having the back of the vehicle sagged down distributes more of the weight to the back, which affects our braking here in the front because the weight's not transferring properly under the front brakes like it used to. And we also have less surface contact between our tires and the road when our suspension is loaded down in the back because it changes the geometry of our tires at the front. Bringing it back to factory ride heights, going to restore all those lost performances. We still have more weight there, but now we've got more contact to the road and better distribution for our braking system. With our springs installed, we're heading back out on the course and we're going to do our uneven bump section first. Oh yeah, and you can already tell quite a nice little improvement on back and forth. It does still want to go back and forth, but it definitely springs itself right back straight again right afterwards. There's not as much back and forth oscillation as we had. It does feel a bit stiffer, but it does feel a little bit more comfortable. It's kind of a little bit of a contradiction there, but having it not throw you back and forth as much seems to be a better trade-off than the amount of movement that we've got now. So if we go into our even bump section here, this is going to affect forward and aft. And there's not really too much notice there. This is where we can really notice the back is definitely stiffer. You feel it a little bit stiffer, especially when it comes down. You can feel the bump, but it does seem to level out just a little bit better. We're going to head now into the slalom section, and I expect to see pretty drastic improvements here on how much stability it feels like we have when driving our vehicle. So here we go into the slalom. Oh yeah, that's a huge difference. I mean, the truck's almost level the entire time we're turning. There's almost no, no real pivot to it like there was before. I mean, before it was kind of throwing me back and forth. This feels much better. You still feel the, the minimal amount of Gs, but the amount of tilt the truck has during that is significantly reduced. So that's definitely gonna give me more confidence when I'm out there on the road if a, a tractor trailer has a tire blot in front of me and I gotta get around that gator skin definitely be able to keep control of everything and get my family safe to where we're heading. Now stick around and follow me into the shop if you want to see how I got these installed. We'll begin our installation by lifting up our vehicle to unload the rear suspension. You can use a floor jack underneath the frame or the hitch to lift it up. We're using a screw jack since we're on a lift and you'll want to make sure you chalk the front wheels, at least one of the front wheels, both front and back, before you lift it up because your parking brake and those mechanisms require the rear wheels to be on the ground, so you want to chalk the front. We're now on the passenger side. We're going to be starting over here. It doesn't matter which side you start on, but we're going to take the small mount that comes in our kit. This is what our spring's going to mount to, and we're just going to set it on top of our leaf spring over the factory U-bolts where they clamp to our axle. We're going to try and center this as best as possible, but it doesn't need to be perfectly centered. Once you've got it set in place, Take the U-bolts that come in your kit, and we're just going to drop them down on each side like that. We'll now take the clamps that come in our kit. These are the ones with the larger diameter holes, and one of them is going to be slotted. doesn't matter which 
side the slotted end goes on. They just made it slotted to make it easier to get it in place. We're gonna slide it over our U-bolt. Then we're going to take a washer, place it on the U-bolt, and then thread one of the nylon locking nuts onto it. We're gonna do the same thing on the other side of this U-bolt, and then the other U-bolt on the other side of our spring mount. We're gonna do the exact same thing. Now that we've got everything loosely installed, we can go back and tighten down our clamps. When doing this, try to hold your bracket centered. Again, it doesn't matter if it's off a little bit. And then we'll use a 19 millimeter socket to tighten them down. And we're gonna go back and forth to try to tighten it down evenly. Once you've got it pretty close to being snug, this is a good time to take the opportunity to double check yourself and make sure that it's centered. Then we can finish snugging it up. We can now lift our super spring into position. Your hardware does come pre-installed with the rollers already on it. They're just hand tight, so it's a little bit easier if you just take those out now. Since they're pretty long bolts, it be a little harder to work with. And then we're just gonna lift it over the tire, kind of twist and roll it into place to where it sits above our leaf spring and sits on top of the bracket that we just installed. Now we got our spring in there, the shackles on each end, we'll need to rotate those down so they're on each side of our leaf spring. You may need to slide it forward and backward a little bit when doing this. And they are gonna be a little bit tight to go around the leaf springs. It's doable by hand, but again, it is just gonna be a little snug. Now that we've got this side down, we're gonna do the same thing over on the other side of our new spring. Now that we've got our shackles down on each side, we can start putting the rollers back in. The big thing that you need to pay attention when doing this is on our rear shackle here. There is the clamp that goes around our factory U-bolts here. We need to make sure we've got at least an inch of clearance between the roller and there. So you may need to slide your spring back just a little bit to get that. In the front, we wanna kinda of do the same thing, but we only need to have a quarter inch of clearance in the front, so the back is more important to pay attention to. We'll now take our hardware and install it. We're on the rear shackle, and on the rear shackle, we're gonna be using the middle hole. You can choose whichever holes you like. The lower the hole, the less support the new spring's going to be giving you. The higher up we go, the more support we're gonna get. We're gonna be using the middle hole here in the rear. We're going to slide the bolt in. The bolt can go either way, but we're, we need to make sure we've got proper clearance so we don't hit anything. And we do have potentially some clearance issues if we put the bolt in the other direction. Once we've got it slid through our roller and the other side of our shackle, we can loosely secure it with a nylon locking nut. And we're always going to want to pay attention to where these bolts stick out to make sure as they move up and down, we're not going to hit anything. That's why we put the larger nut side over on this side because there's less. We're now gonna to come to the front, we're gonna do the same thing, but you may need a pry bar to put a little bit of pressure on the spring in order to get your hardware started. And again, we're gonna put our nut on the outside. Over on the driver's side though, for our front shackle, we're gonna be putting our bolt the opposite way due to clearances over there. We're now gonna take the smaller diameter bolts that come in our kit. You'll receive two different lengths. We're gonna be using the longer of the two. We're gonna slide a flat washer on it. Slide our smaller clamps on it. These are the smaller ones that got smaller holes. We're gonna slide another one on. Another flat washer. And then we're going to just hand tighten on a nylon locking nut. We can then take our clamps that we made here. and We're just going to slide them around the new leaf spring and the mounting bracket that we had installed. Then we're going to take another one of those long bolts with a flat washer on it. We're gonna slide down through the top bracket and then go into 
the bottom bracket as well. We'll then finish that off with another flat washer and nylon locking nut. Now you'll want to just double check yourself and make sure you've got your spring positioned the way you want it because once we tighten these down, it's going to be snug in that position. <clears throat> We've got ours positioned how we want it and then we're just going to tighten it down. We'll use a 13 millimeter socket and wrench to snug these down. We can now go back and tighten down our large shackle bolts here on the bottom. Never tighten the top ones, those will come pre-torqued to what they're supposed to be. And we're going to use a 1 and a 16th inch wrench for the nut and a 1 and an 8th inch wrench or socket for the bolt. And we're just going to tighten this down basically hand tight. We don't want this to be over torqued. We're just going to run it down until we see the clamp just start to squeeze together. And we're going to do the same thing with the other bolt on the other side of our spring. Now that we've got our passenger side completed, we're going to perform the exact same procedures over on the driver's side to get that side installed. Once you've got it done, we can lower our vehicle down off the jack and our installation is complete. We're ready to load up our truck and hit the road. And that completes our look at Super Springs Custom Suspension Stabilizer and Sway Control Kit for factory leaf springs on your 2016 Silverado 2500.